To begin with, we're going to place a handful of things that are required to make our game work. A star field, not a static background picture this time. The player image, plus a score label. Those three things will use an SK emitter node, an SK sprite node, and an SK label node respectively. So let's declare them as properties now. We'll say, var star field is an SK emitter node, implicitly unwrapped. Var player is an SK sprite node, implicitly unwrapped. And var score label is an SK label node, implicitly unwrapped. Just like last time, we'll also have a score integer as zero with a did set observer inside there that sets score label dot text to be equal to score with string interpolation for our score integer. So we'll update the score label as the score changes. To set those properties up with meaningful values, we're going to put a lot of code into did move to view. So everything's created and positioned up front. So we'll start by saying our background color for our whole scene is dot black, like space. Our star field is going to be a new SK emitter node using the file named initializer, star field. And I'm going to force unwrap that because we know we added that star field SKS file to our project already. For its position, I'm going to say star field position is equal to cg point x1024 y384. Now that is exactly on the right edge of our scene, halfway up. So stars will flow in from the right to the left. However, by default, emitter nodes start with no particles inside them. So when our game starts, the whole screen will be black and stars will start flying in from right to left. It won't look great. What we want to do is to pre-fill our screen with lots of stars. So we can say starfield.advance simulation time by 10 seconds. Create 10 seconds and move 10 seconds worth of particles now immediately. Then add child the starfield and do starfield.z position is minus one, placing it behind the other things in our game. As for our player, we can say player is an SK sprite node with the image named initializer of player. The player's position is going to be uh, CG point X100 Y384. So 100 points in from the left and about halfway up our game screen. For its physics body, we're going to say it's an SK physics body. This time we're going to use a new initializer, which is texture and size. This creates a physics body from a texture, a picture inside a sprite, along with a size we can scale it up or down. In our case, we're going to say player.texture, the texture for our player, which is actually in an optional SK texture. So we have to have uh, player.texture force unwrap. because so we know it has a texture, that's the point of the player. Its size will be player.size. So this thing will make a physics body by drawing around the player's texture at their current size. We'll say player dot physics body question mark dot contact test bit mask, which contacts we care about will be one. And add child player out of the game scene. Now this one thing here is a special number. We're using that to mean the other things in our game, the things they'll collide with. For our score label, we can say a score label is an SK label node with the font named Chalk Duster. For position, we'll say CG point X16, Y16, to the bottom left corner of our game. And we'll align it using its horizontal alignment mode to be dot left, then add that to our game scene. Now by default, that'll have no text, but if we say score equals zero, that line of code there, 42, will trigger our property observer up here to make our score label have the default text of score zero. And finally, we want to disable gravity. We'll say physics world dot gravity is dot zero because we're in space. And physics world dot contact delegate equals self. Tell us when contacts happen. 
Now, of course, this last line here, assigning ourselves to be the contact delegate for our scene, is going to cause problems. So we haven't conformed to the SK physics contact delegate protocol yet. So we'll just do that now. We'll scroll up here, find our game scene, and say this thing conforms to SK physics contact delegate, like that. And now if we press Command R to build and run the game, we can see how it looks. Again, if you have a physical iPad, I recommend you use it. Uh, here, the game's actually pretty light and fast, so it'd be pretty okay in Simulator on modern Macs. But just to be sure, having a real iPad's generally a better idea. If I turn it around, there we go. Our player is flying through, sort of a space field flying behind them, a nice score label down here. 